Red Riding Hood, Cinderella, Hansel and Gretel, Snow White, etc. Everybody knows these fairy tales either from the Disney movies or from children's books, but these versions we know today aren't the versions the Green Brothers originally published, and the original stories weren't intended for kids at all. Back in the early 1800s, Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm were working as librarians. Born into a well-off family, their lives took a turn for the worse when their father died and the brothers struggled through school and university in poverty, but with excellent grades. Throughout their time at university, the brothers became quite close with Professor Savigny and were able to use his personal library as they became very interested in German law, history and folklore. During this time, their mother also died and Jacob and Wilhelm were concerned about the stability of the family. Nonetheless, they stayed interested in German history and folk tales. In 1809, Archim from Arnim and Clemens Brentano asked the brothers to collect oral folk tales so they could preserve them from extinction. The Grimms eagerly collected many old books and asked old men in remote rustic parts of Germany to tell the tales they knew. Many of these stories were warning stories for children, making them afraid of the big old forest and thus ensuring that they would not go too deep into the woods. That is why the forest still is an important factor in many fairy tales. The first volume of the first edition was published in 1812, containing 86 stories. The first volume was much criticized because, although they were called children tales or Kinder und Hausmärchen, they were not regarded as suitable for children. The Grimms tried to represent the original stories as faithfully as possible, even if that meant gory and vulgar details. The Grimm's work was actually part of a wider political movement in Germany at the time. The country was split into 200 principalities and many people, including the Grimm's, wanted to see them united as a single nation. So many writers and thinkers were turning to traditional folk tales to define a certain national identity where all Germans could identify with. In a spirit of romanticism, the theory was that these stories passed down from one generation to the next and they contained the collective hopes, fears and morals of all German people. The Grimm's weren't the only ones putting together collections of folklore, but it's their work that became the best known. If you don't feel like having your childhood memories shattered, click away now because in what follows I will share some of the more grisly details in the original versions of the tales. According to Disney, after her widowed father remarries and then dies, Cinderella is left at the mercy of her wicked stepmother and two ugly stepsisters. They force her to do manual labor and wear rags, but she is so sweet, kind and beautiful that even wild animals love her and help her out. When the prince of the kingdom throws a ball, Cinderella's fairy godmother appears and creates a dress, coach and footman for her so she can go to the party. The prince falls in love with her, but the magic ends at midnight, so she has to run away, leaving behind only her glass slipper. The prince travels the land looking for the girl who fits the shoe, but her stepsisters sabotage her by smashing it. Luckily she still has the other shoe, so she gets to live happily after too. But in the Grimm's original version, Cinderella has two beautiful stepsisters, they just happen to be utterly horrible. There is no fairy godmother, just white doves sent to help Cinderella by her dead mother. And the prince actually holds three balls. At midnight on the third night, the prince lays a dart trap for Cinderella, which is where she loses her shoe. When her sisters get their chance to try on the missing shoe, they each cut off different parts of their feet in order to fit into the tiny slipper. But the blood dripping from their shoes gives them away. The prince eventually finds his girl, and at their wedding the magic doves reappear to peck out the evil sister's eyes. According to Disney, threatened by her stepdaughter's beauty, a wicked stepmother orders a huntsman to take the young girl out into the woods and kill her, bringing back her heart. The huntsman can do it and let Snow White escape into the forest. She finds a tiny house where singing dwarves live. They decide to let her stay to keep house for them. The Wicked Queen finds out via her magic mirror that Snow White isn't dead and sets out to kill her with a poisoned apple. Though the dwarves get revenge by driving the queen off the edge of a cliff, they can't wake Snow White. Until a passing prince comes and wakes her with true love's kiss, and then they live happily ever after. But originally in the first edition of the story, it wasn't a wicked stepmother at all, it was Snow White's own mother, and she didn't just want Snow White's heart, she wanted her lungs and liver too. When she discovers that the huntsman hasn't killed the girl, she sets out to try and kill her in three different ways. First with an overly tight corset, second with a poisoned comb, and finally with a poisoned apple. It is not true love's kiss that revives Snow White, it is a good shake, as the prince attempts to make off with Snow White's glass coffin, and the queen doesn't get pushed off a cliff, she is forced to dance herself to death in a pair of red hot iron shoes.
Disney's adaptation of Rapunzel, Tangled, is very recent and not very traditional. Rapunzel gets a lot more agency than most other Disney princesses, and her prince isn't a prince at all. But the elements of a sanitized Rapunzel story are there. A beautiful princess is kept captive by a witch who uses a girl's long hair to climb in and out of a tower prison, and it's only when she meets a man that she gets to escape. But according to the Grimms, the reason the Wicked Witch gets to make off with baby Rapunzel is that her dad stole herbs from the witch's garden to meet his wife's cravings. And when he got caught, he agreed to hand over his firstborn. Stuck in a tower, Rapunzel lets down her hair for the witch day after day, but when a passing prince hears her singing, he decides to pay Rapunzel a visit himself. He secretly visits her several times, and the witch only finds out because Rapunzel gets pregnant, and innocently asks why her belly is getting so big. In a rage, the witch cuts off the girl's hair and uses it to lure the prince back into the tower, then chucks him off the top, letting him fall into a thorn bush that blocks out his eyes. Eventually, though, there is a happy ending when the couple get back together and Rapunzel's tears heal the prince's eyes. But there is more. In some of the grim stories, there is an unpleasant theme of anti Semitism. For example, in one story, the hero tortures a Jewish man by making him dance on thorns until he is bleeding as a punishment for some imagined sins. When a man cries for help, the judge sides with his torture and the Jew is hanged as a thief. The racism combined with German patriotism might explain why the Nazis saw the Grimm fairy tales as such a great match for their propaganda. In films aimed at kids, Little Riding Hood gets rescued by a man in an SS uniform, while Puss in Boots morphs into a kind of Hitler figure at the end. That's all I gotta say about that, see you guys later, bye.